What are some examples of movie logic that don't work in real life? People who work in retail or as a waiter waitress just saying cover me to their co-worker and leaving in the middle of a shift to go take care of a personal matter, catch a murderer, etc. You can't just tell a waitress to cover twice as many tables like that, it won't work. And you won't work either, cause you'll get fired. Firing up a vehicle that's been sitting for years just by adding some gas that's also been sitting for years. Jurassic World. Apparently all a jeep abandoned in the jungle for 20 years needs to run again as a golf cart battery. It drives me nuts every time a movie has a scene where a person is hiding on the ceiling a few feet above someone else and they never see them. Just because the camera is angled so the audience can't see them doesn't mean a real person wouldn't notice Tom Cruise hanging from their ceiling fan. That visual made me laugh. When a woman gets out of bed after fricking and pulls the entire sheet off the bed to wrap around herself. Flying airplanes and helicopters extremely low to the ground. There's absolutely no reason to fly a helicopter between buildings during a car chase. There is absolutely no reason to fly an airplane 200 feet above the ground when they can effectively drop bombs from miles in the air. Or having to be anywhere near the target to fire missiles. Like seriously, those missiles have a range in miles. Godzilla would never even see the dang plane. When the good guy follows the bad guy in a car and the bad guy never notices even though they are the only two cars in the road. Following the bad guy in a fancy car, parking 50 feet away across the street and watching him like you're not being noticed. The main character is an absolute beast in fights with common mercenaries then suddenly loses all of their muscles in the final battle and it takes 50x longer than it should. That's not how fights work. Also, a group of 10 common mercenaries attacking one at a time for maximum convenience. In that scene where the good guy gets completely surrounded by bad guys with guns. I understand the principle, but if those guys actually opened fire, they'd just end up shooting each other in the face. Fields of fire people. Or how as long as they're chasing the good guy the bad guys shoot tirelessly but right when they corner him they all stop trying to kill him. Cutting my own hair in a gas station bathroom while I'm on the run and when I leave it's salon fabulous. That crap would itch so bad. S pair down the shirt. Where slivers suck butt. Just no. Or they color it in the bathroom without making a mess or staining their skin. Lul. Like 99% of car jumps are phony, most cars would destroy the suspension or at least blow out the tires. I just said we'd make it across, I didn't say anything about the wheels staying on. The idea that we have nothing in between small rockets and freaking nukes. Crap like Pacific Rim or Godzilla where it's like, small missiles don't freaking hurt something, so we jump straight to nuclear options or other ridiculous ideas. Trying to convince a retired guy to do one more job. I'm too old for this crap. Sitting in the back seat of a car and casually reaching forward to snap the neck of the person in the driver's seat. It does next to nothing if you do it like they do in movies and it makes for a very awkward ride home. But all neck breaking in general. If it were that easy to kill someone by jerking their neck all the paralyzed people would just be dead. Walking away from an explosion. Surviving a blast as long as you don't get hit by the fireball. Someone needs to explain to Hollywood how a grenade kills people. Did you want to go to dinner tomorrow? Sure. I'll see you then. See you when? At dinner time. Turning on the news radio at the most convenient time for the plot. Whenever someone is in a spacesuit there are always lights inside the helmet to illuminate the person's face. This is, of course, so we know which character we're looking at, but in real life having lights inside your helmet shining on your face would greatly hinder your ability to see your surroundings. It's like having the light on in your bedroom while trying to see outside in the dark. Movie space suit helmets have way more glass in them. When they show what is supposed to be a sloppy teenage rock band playing and yet everything is perfect, the drummer's keeping excellent time, the vocals and background vocals are spot on, and the guitarist is nailing perfect bends and playing at Satriani levels. This is one reason I like Scott Pilgrim, even as a band that played for a while, SX Bob Omb still a rough, and finished style that makes it clear they're not about to win on sheer talent. Last minute airport dashes. 
Everything pre-9 stroke 11 seems like a fantasy about how efficient an airport can be. It's unreal how some movies you can just pull up to the departure gate and get on your flight in 10 minutes. I stand corrected. It seems that Canadian airports are unable to get you through in a short time. Or at least in my experiences. People jumping through windows, breaking them and landing on the shards but not getting a scratch. Obligatory the nice guys did this one right. Shooting a monitor to destroy a computer's hard drive. Breaking a flip phone in half to dispose of the evidence on it. Grand romantic gestures don't convince someone who's on the fence about you that you're worth it, just that you're probably a nutcase. Learned this the hard way, RIP to my backyard fence. When the pressure in an engine becomes so high that the gauge itself breaks. Warning. Danger to manifold. The gun that never runs out of bullets. Alternatively, bad guy's gun jams just as he is about to shoot the good guy. People holding their breath underwater for ungodly amounts of time. Non-main character. I can't do it I won't be able to hold my breath that long. Main character. Yeah you can. Both proceed to hold their breath for like 10 minutes. If someone in a movie starts coughing, they are about to die. If a woman says she doesn't feel well, she's pregnant. Every window in Paris always overlooks the Eiffel Tower. Stopping in the middle of a giant battle with people dying all around you to kiss a loved one, or hug or high five a fellow mate, or just to face off your nemesis. When the bosses fight, suddenly no one else on the battlefield exists. Finding an easy parking spot next to the building you're going to, usually out in front. My husband and I call those spots TV parking. Practically anything to do with guns. How they fire. What they can fire through. Their general accuracy or lack of it. Bullet counts. Firing through water. Reloading. Blowing up stuff with guns. I could go on. I'm saying this knowing that reloading the weapons they use should be assumed to happen off screen. Could you imagine movies with heavy gunfire being 30 minutes longer to watch than reload every time? This doesn't bother me but most other attributes do. Wife prepares massive breakfast spread every morning. Husband grabs coffee and takes one bite of bacon before heading out the door. And the kids just barely sit, talk about something. Take one spoonful of cornflakes and quickly run because the school bus arrived. Stuffing a cloth in someone's mouth doesn't gag them. No really. When tied up, they don't have to sit there and wait for their rescuer to pull it out. It completely breaks immersion when they act gagged, but could easily just spit it out. It could be easily pushed out with the tongue tbh. Classes in high school lasting only 5 minutes. And the breaks between classes are a leisurely half hour. Police have to account for every bullet fired. Sheer amount of paperwork behind the scenes in most crime and police thriller movies would be unreal. Knocking people out. In the movies it's a quick smack to the noggin and that person is out cold for a few minutes hours. In real life depending on how hard you hit someone they can be out for a second or two. Any longer and there will be significant brain damage. Knocking them out for several hours. Well they're probably dead. Try not to be unconscious for too long, it's like, super bad for you. If you are shy, you can change your hairdo and outfit and immediately become extroverted. Or, if you are frumpy and ugly, just take off your glasses and let down your hair. Instant beauty queen. A car hits a pole and it freaking blows up. It might start steaming, but I'm pretty sure it wouldn't blow up like a bomb. Yeah, pack off smokes to the clerk. You actually have to specify a brand. Smokes clearly is the brand. Giving birth to super clean babies that look several months old, and there's no afterbirth. Cockies never seem to be handled by anyone. They just hop in and start it up. A person gets shot and a tiny trickle of blood comes out and they die immediately. All the massive blow ups of cars and things that wouldn't really blow up that dramatically. Also, when a character who never drinks or parties goes out and slams back a ton of shots and beers but doesn't get sloppy drunk. A non drinker throwing back that much alcohol would realistically be stumbling, slurring, knocking crap over and puking, not dancing vivaciously and with coordination. Not to mention that most of the explosions are all flash and no bang. C4 detonations look nothing like movie explosions. 
Character 1, you did a bad thing. Character 2, wait I can explain what happened. Character 1, runs away like a child before an explanation can occur. Most of the times it's more so. 1, you did X. 2, wait I can explain X. 1, no you can't this is the last straw. 2, instead of starting to explain, just repeat wait I can explain X or please don't leave me making them appear even more guilty. If the girl says no, don't listen. Keep pestering her and hurting yourself until you hurt yourself enough that she finally gives in. That's how you earn movie love. That or share just a single scene with the girl and then after the adventure is over you can kiss out of nowhere and the movie will pretend you had a whole romantic subplot when there wasn't any. Hooking up after a massive shared trauma is the key to long lasting love. Doesn't matter if you hated each other before have nothing in common, or that she was still getting over her last relationship. Trauma. God's eraser. 30 seconds to self-destruct. 3 minute heated conversation. 10 seconds to self-destruct. CPR equals necromancy. Also, shocking doesn't fix a flat line. It induces one when there is a problem with the heartbeat. It's the equivalent of turn it off, turn it back on. Not saying goodbye on the phone. This is the goodest flyboy. He will bring you 10 years of happiness in exchange for a like on this video. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.